Zambian Republican President Mr. Hakainde Hichilema was this weekend at the Vatican where he visited the Holy Father Pope Francis. We caught up with Mr. Hichilema to find out a little more about his visit to the Vatican. Mr. President, thank you very much and welcome to Rome, the Vatican. This morning you met the Holy Father. Could you share with us what this encounter, what, are, what were your sentiments as you met the Holy Father this morning? What does this mean to you? In the first place, thank you very much for the interview. Uh, we truly had a momentous meeting uh, with uh, the Pope, Pope Francis. Uh, we covered a lot of range uh, issues and um, very fundamental to to humanity to 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 sustenance of societies. So essentially, it was a good meeting. I'm glad I'm here, and I'm grateful to uh, the Vatican and to the establishment for giving us this opportunity to meet the Pope early into our presidency. We are still less than six months into office. We are. Uh, literally uh, five months and three weeks, to be precise, from the time we were inaugurated. So we're really grateful. Uh, Mr. President, what message would you be taking to the people of Zambia after this encounter with Pope Francis? I think the message is very clear. As I said, we covered a, a range of issues. Uh, primarily the message that, um, you know, um, the Board of Christ is one. Uh, the world needs unity. Uh, the country, our country needs unity, as, as uh, the church itself needs unity. And uh, because unity anchored on stability, you know, peace, equity, fairness, is critical to advancement of societal needs and uh, diversity in society, different needs that we covered uh, for society, and that the Pope and the church uh, remains committed to advancing social justice, advancing, if you like, uh, opportunities for which is shared by our government uh, of Zambia, UPND government. I think that's, a, that, that that's one line of the message. And the other message that uh, we really discussed with the Pope is that uh, we as a government uh, will embrace uh, all religious organizations in our country. They all have space. They all have a right uh, to basically, you know, promote the evangelical work uh, freely. We covered a few issues around, if you like, the importance of uh, counseling each other. Uh, the, the, the first, the church on one side, then the government on another, working together for the same constituents, really, citizens, across the world, in our country, but counseling each other, advising each other, Praying for each other is important so that we can save uh, Zambians, we can save uh, God's people in individual countries as well as uh, in the global community, global village. I was impressed that uh, the Pope is alive to issues of development, education, health. And I shared, we shared the UPND policies around health, around education. I was very impressed that he's, he's aware. Uh, of uh, our educational policy, education policies offering education to all, including those that are disadvantaged. And I, I did tell him that I'm, I'm a beneficiary of that myself, born in a village, and uh, education made a difference. The rest is history. So he understands that we shared common interests in that area in the issues of employment for the youth, young people. Very important as well, and keeping values, Christian values as we run the country uh, in terms of, uh, you know, societal behavior, which is in a critical ingredient to keep our population, especially young people, to, to get them to do gainful activities. And that's why school education was important, jobs, business opportunities, and obviously uh, support, as you know, <laughs> pop, support social support uh, to, 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 to the weak, to the old, to, to the differently abled, and indeed to, you know, if you like, um, disadvantaged communities. Very important, and I think we shared a lot in common around those issues. You have been president, as you said yourself, for about six months now. Yeah, indeed. And in these 
uh, month. Already you have set priorities in the economy, education, uh, unity, among other things, among other many things. And uh, you did take a bold step in your first budget as a government, uh, abolishing school fees, making education available to all students. You have spoken about unity among Zambians, regardless of ethnicity, of tribe. Indeed. Could you talk to us about these priorities of your government and of your presidents? Indeed. I think the important thing is that uh, to understand that uh, we are only implementing our policy offerings to the people of Zambia. When we went out to seek election to the people of Zambia, we made the people of Zambia aware. We made it known to them that there are things that we believe are important, are fundamental, and are basics. These include education. It is the best investment. And we are walking that talk. That is why in our first budget, remember this is February, we are just in our second month of the UPND budget, which commenced in January. And we have delivered on our promise of education for all, for the disadvantaged family members, um, alongside you know, private school systems for those that are able to afford. But society cares more for those that are disadvantaged. That's why we offered education for all free education grade one up to 12 as the beginning. We are looking at uh, attending to college, to university, although we are now, but partially, not fully. So because of the value of education, society without education, without skills, how can it develop? How can you deliver economic development without skills? How can you produce more food in a more efficient way without know-how in agriculture, irrigation, genetics in terms of seed and husbandry. So this is important. This is fundamental. It changes society. You look at Singapore, they focused on education. Clearly, it has made a difference. It has paid dividends. So what else did we say to the people of Zambia would do? We said to the people of Zambia, we'll work on ensuring that we reunite the country. And that's our priority for us. Because on the platform of unity, equity, fair treatment, will be able to bind, continue binding and bonding ourselves as one Zambia, one nation, one people. And you will see in our cabinet, uh, we criticized the previous government's cabinet, which was lopsided. Cabinet came from a few regions only. And we mandated ourselves publicly that when we're in office, we'll ensure that cabinet is a reflection of the diversity in our country. And truly today, all provinces of Zambia, 10 of them are represented on the UPND government cabinet table. I think that's important. It sends a clear message that this is your government, this is our government. And what else, what else have we done? We have backed the subject, very, very old, inequitous subject of distribution of national resources to all our people across the country. We have fundamentally increased the Constituents Development Fund, in short called CDF, delivered to the constituencies to allow local communities to decide their developmental priorities. Again, in education, health, clean water supply, sanitation, and um, obviously income generating activities. And the 25.7 million kwacha further we have given to each constituency equally across the country is unprecedented. It's never happened before in the history of our country. So we've taken away resources from the center where wastage is the order of the day. And we've taken a part of that money to the owners, the people of Zambia. Back their decisions with financial support. We're very, very delighted about this. And this is only the beginning again. So the story goes on. The issue of uh, divisions, if I may return to this, was diabolical. It was dehumanizing to our people. And I think Zambians are now saying, at least those who are in the country, that this is another independence. This is another form of freedom. And I think we're happy to see Zambians enjoy that freedom, including issues of uh, ending violence, lawlessness in our country, are all part of the menu of commitments we made to the people of Zambia. And we're very delighted that um, we're walking the path that we chose. We're walking the talk, others will say. There are many more things I could say, but I think at this stage, that is what I would say. So these are 
issues paramount to us. And uh, as you know, if I may extend, if you allow me, uh, we, we are afflicted with COVID-19. It's a very serious issue. When we came into office, the vaccination levels were only 3%, national vaccination levels. In the relaunch of the COVID pandemic control, to bring it under control, if I may say so, we've now gone to almost 25% within a very short space of time. So putting effort, putting resources, mobilizing vaccines, you know the adage even at the EU meeting in Brussels that there must be equity in vaccine access because if we don't do that, no one is safe because COVID does not recognize boundaries. Equally in our country, we have taken this program across the country or the provinces. Extremely important, very important to us. Any last word, Mr. Hichelema? To simply say thank you um, to Pope Francis and his team and uh, uh, the church in Zambia, and also to remind Zambians that uh, we are a Christian nation, and but we must live like Christians. We must uh, walk the talk of living Christian values. And that reminds me to tell the people, ask the people of Zambia and others across the world, that corruption is something we must abhor, and we must fight corruption. Corruption takes resources away from those who need it, young people, the sick, the old. We must restore integrity in our country. We must know that public office is not for self-aggrandizement, it's for service to the people. Otherwise, I'm very grateful for the interview, for giving me this opportunity. God bless you. Thank you for your visit, and uh, we wish you a safe journey, you and your delegation, and all the people back home. Many thanks, many thanks, and please greet other Zambians who live in this city, beautiful old city of Rome, uh, and other places. We haven't had the time to meet them, but we're grateful that um, they are representing us well in this country and in other parts of Europe. We must always remember how we conduct ourselves when we're outside Zambia is a reflection of what Zambia should be. Zambian President Mr. Hakainde Hichlema on Family Today.